One of the most common questions that I've been receiving on the YouTube channel is how can you protect yourself from the spike damage? So that's the topic of today's video, spike injury detox. This is based on a review that I read, someone provided to me, I think, or maybe I found it, I can't remember, I go through a lot of literature, but nevertheless, I found it fascinating. That's what I wanna share with you today. My name is Dr. Mikhail Arashek of Merogenomics. Let's get started. All right, so the preamble before how you can, how you can detoxify yourself from spike protein. Let's talk about the intro of, the, of this review. And by the way, just stay till the end of the video because at the end of the video, I'm going to provide the table, show you the table from this publication that lists all of the different proposed compounds and foods that could be protecting you in terms of both with regards to how to deal with the spike protein as well as how to potentially be boosting your immune system so check it out at the end because there's a lot of information and i think everyone can will be able to identify with something on, in that table very very interesting but in the introduction the authors talked about that by the end of september 2022 so this is already you Last year, approximately 70% of everyone in the world was already inoculated with COVID-19 vaccines, which is absolutely an incredible number of, of global population, considering that we did this in the midst of a pandemic, which is not how we typically supposed to be vaccinating. Normally, vaccines are supposed to be used prophylactically. Now, what does that mean? Since then, we've also, we've known that, look, these vaccines are also unprecedented. The COVID-19 vaccines are unprecedented because they were the fastest vaccines ever approved in history. So that's very unusual. And as a consequence, because of that, that meant also, of course, there was no long-term data available. And that means there could be issues, which is what basically prompted the authors to write this article in case there might be long-term issues and therefore how can we deal with this. Makes sense. But in addition to that, the authors also mentioned, look, the reason why these vaccines were, especially mRNA vaccines, which is also the type of technology that I'm very interested in as well. The reason why these vaccines got this unprecedented fast approval is based on certain assumptions that since then simply turn out to be incorrect. And they give a couple examples. Number one is that the injection of the vaccine would remain at the site of injection. And that turned out not to be true. Numer apparently numerous studies have shown I haven't looked at it they're just simply talking about this I'm just telling you what I'm reading in that what I was reading in that review that within hours or days you see spike protein post injection spike protein is circulating and therefore it can reach distant organs as well so that's issue number one and issue number two what we're told that this would that the spike protein itself would be very short-lived post injection and that also turned out not to be true it was assumed that the lifespan of both the mrna template as well as the spike protein would follow what what we naturally see with mrna but remember the mrna use in the vaccine is not natural it uses or i shouldn't say not natural it's it's contrived it's synthetic and it uses pseudouridine genetic compounds that are not typically found and as a consequence they last longer and it looks that both the mRNA as well as the spike protein can last many weeks post injection. As a consequence the authors mentioned look clearly this means that we could be seeing some long-term issues just because of that alone and that basically brings us now to the gist of this article which is basically what can we do and they divided the article maybe like i would say into two main sections one was nutritional support so what can you do in terms of food to support yourself and then number two what can you do in terms of uh, the spike pro dealing with the spike protein itself the food itself and enhancing the quality of the food is to basically improve your immune system and then 
the, the rest is to deal with the spike protein. So let's deal with the food first that, and we're gonna go over briefly here. So food also makes sense because recall that, um, that obesity as well as diabetes, which are conditions re related to nutrition as well, they were predisposing those individuals to greater likelihood of experiencing damage from COVID-19 as well. So food makes sense. So they mentioned, look, we're talking about the importance of eating wholesome foods and plant-based diet in order to increase the number of oxidants, antioxidants in, in your diet. So that's, of course, to reduce the oxidation level in, happening in your body. We did talk about that in one of the videos as well, and as well as reduce the inflammation in, in your body. So that, that, that is one thing they, they, they were me mentioning in there. And uh, one that I found um, that was um, also interesting is in terms of dealing with the spike protein, there's a bridge between also the diet and, and the spike protein as well. So in terms of dealing with the spike protein, they were mentioning there's four main paths of attempting to do this. Number one is to improve your gut microbiota. What we mean, we mean by that, of course, to basically improve the type of microorganisms that normally reside in your gut, why is because historically, or historically, I should say, in the midst of the pandemic, it was known that COVID-19 can influence the makeup of your gut microbiome. And we did a video on this as well. And the gut microbiome can influence how your immune system functions as well, how it will respond, and clearly it, its composition it can be reflected in the severity of the COVID-19 disease uh, itself. So that's a nice bridge between the nutrition and dealing with the spike proteins. So they mentioned you, uh, with regards to nutrition, you want to be considering um, also focusing on prebiotics and probiotics as well. And that includes fermented foods such as sauerkrauts and kimchi and they specifically mentioned those two as well so i thought that was interesting but the other three factors how to deal with this the spike protein itself is one is to prevent the spike protein from doing its proper function which is to be able to interact with the receptors that it's supposed to be interacting with number two is to remove the spike protein uh, as well so that's actually number three because microbiome would have been the first one and the last one number four is how to deal with the damage caused by the spike protein. All right, so we just talked about the, the microbiome. Let's talk about now number two, how to prevent proper function of spike protein. So there's that in itself can be divided into a couple categories. Number one, preventing its cleavage. Now, the vaccinal spike protein they mentioned, and I did not check the reference, so I'm not sure how accurate that information is or not. I didn't double check the reference, and sometimes when I go on and check the references, they turn out to be garbage. So, but I'm still gonna mention it anyway because I read this anyway, and they mentioned that the vaccinal spike protein seems to be producing different fragments post cleavage than what you can be observing with the wild type viral spike protein as well so we're talking about like much smaller fragments we don't really know what that really means but that's one way of actually preventing proper um, spike protein function is to produce its cleavage and there's a number of different ways how spike protein can be cleaved including the furin cleavage and we talked about that numerous times in the past videos as well and the other one of course is to prevent the spike protein from being able to find to bind to the receptors it's supposed to be interacting with. Of course, namely, the big one is the ACE2 receptor. That's the main receptor by which the SARS-CoV-2 virus binds to our cells and gains entry. And one of the drugs that they mentioned that focused on specifically is metformin, which is drug used in diabetes. Apparently, that has been shown to prevent spike protein interaction with the ACE2 receptor as well. All right, so that's in terms of how to prevent the proper function of the spike protein. Let's move on to the spike protein destruction. Probably what you'd be most interested in 
And basically they mention is if you want to start destroying the spike protein, what you need to do is increase the, the degradation of protein rate in your body. And the best way and the only way really that they mention how to achieve that is to increase the process that is called autophagy. Autophagy, we mentioned that once in, in, in our video, autophagy is basically a process, your natural process is taking place in your body that removes gunk from your body, including old proteins. And now how can you now stimulate this process of autophagy in, in your body? Here we go. That there's a few of these. Number one is fasting and caloric restriction. So reducing how much food you eat. We had two videos dedicated to the topic of fasting in, in the context of COVID-19. So check that out. Number two, reducing the number of protein you consume. And that is especially powerful in conjunction to fasting. Number three, this is one I found interesting and surprising, increasing heat exposure, such as sauna. So if you ever wonder why sauna might be good for you or why saunas might be healthy, well, there you go. Apparently, it increases autophagy. <laughs> the reverse of that, increasing exposure to cold also apparently increases autophagy. So if you ever want to douse yourself with cold shower, that might be a good reason why, I guess, right? And... Um, Next one, let's see, let me try to remember. Now we're I think we're gonna move on to few diet ones as well, okay? So um, let's, talk about, uh, let's talk about that, which ones? The number five was the compound called sperm, sperminidine, I think it was called. It's found in wheat germ or sp spermidine, one of those two names. I'll put the correct name in the video. That's found in the wheat germ. Um, so that's number five. Number six, they mentioned flavonoids, which can be, for example, found in wine. Um, phenolic compounds. So once again, we're talking about food, which is also can be very useful for improving your immune system as well. And coffee. All of these apparently can help induce autophagy. Now, next was compound that is also often found in wine. Now, let's see if I can remember that. Resveratrol. Mm, hopefully, I got that name correctly as well. So, that one can induce autophagy and apparently it mimics, mm, the, mimics compounds that prevent protein production as well. I think that's what it does or either way, it, it stimulates autophagy. Um, so, there, there was that. And um, let's see what are the, the last ones. Uh, one more, aha, here we go. That, that one, um, metformin, that diabetes medication. Once again, in this case, uh, apparently it also can promote autophagy as well. And the last one that they mentioned, so you can see it's a long list, uh, was um, use of um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy and ozone therapy. We mentioned hyperbaric oxygen therapy once before in terms of proposed methods for long COVID treatment as well, based on a number of scientists that talked about um, clots. And this is how basically one, the authors also mentioned in the introduction, we know spike protein can cause damage and it's microclotting that is one of the ways that it could be destroying the vascular system as well. That's why you might want to be interested in making sure you remove the spike protein as much as possible. And we have an entire series dedicated to that topic. All right, so there's that. And then finally, the last section was in terms of how do you reduce the damage that has been produced by the spike protein. And once again, we're talking about making sure that you reduce anti, um, uh, reduce inflammation, use of antioxidants, and of course, we're talking about reduction of those clotting formations and the author specifically mentioned aspirin. That was one of the questions that I've been also asked in, in the YouTube comments. Apparently these authors saying aspirin has a very long history in, in helping people dealing with clots. So it might be a very good way uh, to deal with it that way. And another one specific compound they, are, compound they specifically focused on was natokinase as well. 
Um, and uh, it's a fibrinolytic compound, and uh, you can get that from fermented uh, soy foods as well. And we did a video on natokinase as well, so please check that out. Besides that, they included a very long table, so please check out this table. And what I like to do is I would invite you to leave comments and let me know because what I liked about this table is that these authors provide scientific references in terms of why they mention these compounds and why, why they mention these compounds that they do what they do is based on scientific evidence. And I'm going to choose the number one compound based on your selection, based on what you leave in the comments. And whatever it is, whether it's on a few comments or, or dozens and dozens, then I'm going to pick one and I'm going to study those references and I'm going to make future videos on those as well. So while we show this table, please check it out and let us know. All right, that's all I have for you today. One of my um, favorite topics to study because of the fact that um, obviously, like I'm, as I mentioned, this is it's a very common question and we need to get to the bottom of this. Please share this video. That's obviously important. That's how also how we grow. Subscribe to our channel. Check out our Patreon account. Patreon account is dedicated to more controversial topics that don't make it to this channel. And we also recently opened a Substack account as well. So check that out. And uh, thank you for all your comments and, and your support. And I look, as always, I look forward to seeing you in a future installment. Bye, everyone.